So, um, Secretary Kerry, the, the Trump White House has offered multiple reasons for why killing Sole Soleimani was necessary, including that he was apparently planning to attack U.S. embassies. But when you listen to several lawmakers, you know, they're now publicly stating that that's not what they were told in those briefings this week. And I want to play some sound for you, sir. Just take a listen to one of them. This is Hawaii Senator Mazie Hirono and then Secretary of State Pompeo from Just this morning. Here you go. We had specific information on an imminent threat, and those threat stream included attacks on U.S. embassies. Period. Full stop. President Trump claimed that Soleimani was actively planning new attacks and looking at attacking U.S. embassies, not just in Baghdad. Did you see intelligence saying that? No. So this is a, an example of the president embellishing as he goes. I have no idea where he got that um, from. And then moments ago, in an interview with Fox News, President Trump said this. Don't the American people have a right to know what specifically was targeted without revealing methods and sources? Well, I don't think so, but we will tell you that probably it was going to be the embassy in Baghdad. Did they have large-scale attacks planned for other embassies? And if those were planned, why can't we reveal that to the American people? Wouldn't that help well, your I can, case? I can reveal that I believe it would have been four embassies. So the president now claims four embassies were targeted after previously saying one. He has offered no proof on any of these claims and is going further than his national security aid. So, Secretary Kerry, is this administration credible? Well, I think everybody in the country understands the president has consistently uh, either told the truth or embellished, as you said. Uh, and. You hear from senators and members of Congress, Republican and Democrat alike, that they did not hear any of this. This was not part of the briefing. And of course, the American people have a right through their representatives uh, to know what the basis of uh, an attack is. But, but more importantly, if the president, you know, he started out his speech yesterday saying uh, that Iran will not get a nuclear weapon. Well, if, if he hadn't pulled out of the agreement, that would be one promise that he actually had already kept because they didn't have one and they weren't about to get one and they couldn't get one without the United States knowing it or any of our allies at the same time. We had 13 years in front of us before there was any shift at all in what Iran was allowed to do or not allowed to do. 13 years during which this administration could have been negotiating the follow-on agreements, Yemen, Hezbollah, missiles, arms trafficking, all of that was available to be negotiated. Now there's no negotiation at all. And in fact, the president of the United States farmed out to another country, Iran, the decision as to whether or not we would have been at war. Because if Iran had hit Americans, if they had attacked more broadly, then you know the president would have been in a position to have to respond. So whether or not we were at war was in fact determined more by the Iranian response to the killing of their general than it was by a decision that Congress and, and the United States made itself. That's disgraceful, uh, and it's simply unacceptable. Uh, on, the, on the strike itself, you know, we, Democrats, Republicans, they agree that, that General Soleimani was a terrorist, right, that he had blood on his hands. But still, is it acceptable, to kill, is, is it acceptable to kill the top military leader of a country without being formally at war? Well, that gets very complicated in the context of international law and what judgment you can make. The president does have a right, if there is an imminent attack or some exigent reason for moving, to uh, take steps to protect the United States of America. The question here is whether or not there was anything imminent, whether or not there was anything gained by this that could not have been gained in a different way. And I think, uh, you know, nobody, and, I, and I, I resent the notion that he and others uh, in the Republican Party are trying to say that uh, Democrats who are raising the legitimacy of this judgment are somehow, uh, Soft. you know, opposed to the idea that Soleimani himself should be eliminated from this earth. We're not. Nobody has said that. Everybody understands that Soleimani uh, has blood on his hands of Americans, and, and, and nobody's mourning the fact just bluntly that he's dead.
but they are upset by exactly what I just described, that the subsequent events that flow from that kind of a choice were sufficient that Republican and Democrat presidents alike previously who had the option did not think it was worth taking that risk. President Trump has been reckless, impulsive, does this on his own, likes to think it makes him look tough, but it actually has shut the door to the kind of diplomacy in many cases that could have and should have flowed uh, from any action that we took, number one. Number two, it, as I said, farmed out a decision of what comes next to relying on a regime that we don't like and don't trust to actually behave in a rational way. And, and that's dangerous. And moreover, the president has alienated our allies, the people who have been trying to stay in this agreement because they know that the agreement is sound and it's working. Uh, and, and they believe that uh, the president has really shut the door to the kinds of diplomacy that could ex actually advance America's but, interests but and Mr. make Secretary, America safer. Uh, on, on the JCPOA, you know, when you were watching President Trump earlier this week, they're standing at the White House. He he said it was the Obama administration who, who essentially paid for those Iranian missiles that were aimed at Americans. And then your successor, Mike Pompeo, was asked about that uh, and about you uh, on Fox News. And this is what he said. They had the resources, they had the ability to build out the militias in Syria, to underwrite Hezbollah, to build their missile program. All of the things that we are now confronting are a direct result of the resources that the regime had available as a result of that terrible nuclear yeah, By the way, John Kerry admitted back in 2016 that this could be an eventuality with the money being used. So he already spilled the beans on that a couple he, he, of years he ago. He knew that risk and it's now come to fruition. Your response to the secretary. Well, the president lied about that because we didn't give $150 billion. They didn't get anything near that. What they got in a totally separate arrangement, totally separate, was the settlement of a lawsuit where they won and they were accruing interest. And the average taxpayer of America, of America was actually having to pay more and more and more interest to the Iranians for the fact that uh, they had won this lawsuit and they were going to get more money. We gave them a little bit of money that was released at that period of time, not as part of the nuclear arrangement. But the fact is, the IRGC had all the money it wanted. The IRGC wasn't, wasn't starving at that point in time. And in fact, Iran owed billions upon billions of dollars. Most of that money went to pay off their debts and to facilitate their economic uh, initiatives. So it's just not true that that money specifically directly went to the IRGC. Money is fungible in any budget. The IRGC had its budget. They had its missiles long before we made any kind of an arrangement with Iran. Do you believe Iran when they say that, that retaliation is over? Do you believe this sequence has ended? I think there's going to be ongoing tension with Iran for some period of time until there is a legitimate negotiation that arrives at a new arrangement for the security of the region. That is what was available to this administration when we left office. They were prepared to negotiate. Other countries in the region were prepared to negotiate. In fact, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the arrangement was such that uh, there was an opening to be able to negotiate with, about Yemen, try to find a peace in Yemen, to deal with their missile programs and other issues. And Iran had made it crystal clear to us they were prepared to negotiate on all of that once the nuclear ban was in place. The nuclear ban has now been in place. Iran was living by the agreement. They were prepared to move forward. And this administration, unilaterally, because it was done by Obama, the president just keeps moving away from anything done by Obama. He decided to get out. And by getting out, he, he has isolated himself from our own allies. China and China, Russia are not allies, but China and Russia worked hard to keep this agreement alive. Europe, our allies, Germany, France and Britain, all worked to keep the agreement alive. They knew it was working. And it was only after the president pulled out that ships in the Gulf began to be threatened, that we yeah. had our embassy under attack recently, 
and all of these other bad things have begun to happen, all of which were foreseeable and were foreseen. Everybody predicted this is exactly where it goes. Why do I say that? Because it's where we were before we got into the negotiation with Iran. They were two months away from being able to break out to a nuclear weapon. They'd already mastered the nuclear fuel cycle. And what we did was contain that. They destroyed facilities. They joined into the agreement. And only Donald Trump broke it apart and brought about this confrontation. One more quickly, Mr. Secretary, then I want to take a commercial break. But something you just said, you know, the fact that this president brings up former President Barack Obama as much as he does, why do you think he seems obsessed with the man? I, I can't answer that. Uh, it has to do with his character and a lot of other things. You'd have to talk to people who are <laughs> professional psychiatrists or others. I'm sure they have answers for it.